Hey, this is Jay Bat, and today I will be doing a review for the official comic adaption of the film Batman Returns. And Batman Returns was released in 1992, so this is basically the official comic adaption of the film. A comic book version of the film, you know. And it is well made, you know. It looks exactly like the film, you know what I'm saying? Panel for panel, scene for scene, even like the dialogue is almost exactly the same. So this will be my review for the official comic adaption of Batman Returns. This is Jay Bat. Hey, what's up? This is Jay Bat, and today I'll be doing a review for the official comic adaption of Batman Returns. As you can see, this is the uh, comic book right here itself. And I've had this for over like 20 years. I originally got this when Batman Returns was in theater. I remember even going to see the film, you know. And plus, I even picked up this comic adaption from like a comic book store at the time, you know, when I was reading comic books a lot. So yeah, this will be my review for uh, Batman Returns, the official comic adaption. Now, this comic adaption is exactly like the film. Just like the previous one I did for uh, the original Batman film from 1989. It's exactly like that. It's just, it's just like the film, like the artwork in it, you know. Now, this time, the writer that returned was Dennis O'Neill. He did return again, you know, for, like, to do the writing job on it. But the, uh, the penciler this time was uh, Steve Irwin. And then they had an anchor called Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Then you had a colorist who was uh, Tom McGraw. And plus the letterer, which was John Costanza. And now the letterer, John Costanza, he also did it for Batman, the official comic adaption, the original one. Then, you know, the same editor returned, uh, Jonathan Peterson. But yeah, this is exactly like the film. Like I said before, with the previous comic adaption of the, the original Batman film from 89, if you read this, you wouldn't even have to watch the film. You know, it, it is exactly like the film, like panel for panel, you know. Like like some of the dialogue is kind of slightly different and some of like the actions that they did and some of like, you know, like the characters had there, you know, some of the movement, like just slight movements or certain, like say like with Batman, if he threw a battering, he didn't throw it in the movie and stuff like that, you know, certain stuff be kind of off. But if you actually read this, it's, it's so exactly like the film. You, you wouldn't even need to watch the film, you know what I'm saying? And it, it is very well done. Like, my only thing I was noticing, like, the artist, whoever was doing, like, the Bruce Wayne, you know, Michael Keaton this time in here, it didn't look as good as the uh, Michael Keaton, Bruce Wayne, and the uh, original Batman comic adaption. It still looked like Michael Keaton, like, exactly like him, but it didn't really look as good as the one from the uh, 89 adaption, you know, comic adaption, you know. I thought it was kind of slightly off. But everybody just remember how they looked, you know, like Michael Keaton looked good as Bruce Wayne, Dan, you know what I'm saying, Batman or whatever, you know. Then you had, uh, like, the artwork for uh, Danny DeVito as Oswald, Copper Pot, the Penguin, and the artwork for uh, Selena Kyle as uh, Catwoman, I thought they did good, you know. Or like Christopher Walken as uh, Max Shrek and stuff, they did. Or Michael Goff as Alfred, you know, you know what I'm saying. I thought all those that the excellent, that they're just like their actors did. Now, uh, Gordon was kind of off, like the artwork for uh, Jim Gordon, commissioner, like, you know, Pat Hingle played him. I thought that was kind of off somewhat. But everybody looked at exactly like they did, except, like I say, like Bruce Wayne and Michael Keaton. It was kind of off. It didn't look as good as the original comic adaption, you know, from the 89. You know? So I'm going to touch on the differences in it without spoiling anything. Like certain scenes in it that were different from the film were like at the beginning with the penguin being in the sewer. In the comic book, he actually spoke at the very beginning. He says, ooh, Batman, I'm trembling. Like when he sees like the bat signal when they're calling Batman for help, when it's like a red triangle circus gang is, is attacking, you know, the citizens of Gotham at the very beginning during Christmas, you know. In the film, the penguin didn't say anything. You just saw his hands through like the bars. But in here you see his hands on the bars or whatever, but he actually speaks. He says, oh, Batman, I'm trembling. Like he's scared because he see the bat signal. Now, he didn't say that in the film, you know what I'm saying? So that's what had like a difference. And I guess some of the stuff was originally supposed to be in the film, but they decided to, you know, like to cut it out in the end. Plus, in the, uh, the comic of that, when, when you see like Bruce Wayne, like, you know what I'm saying, and the Wayne Man and the Bat Singler come, come on in the film, you don't see that in the comic adaption. You don't see the you don't see Bruce Wayne at all. He just out suddenly shows up as Batman in the Batmobile after uh, Gordon puts the signal up. But in the film, you actually saw Bruce Wayne, you know, sitting in Wayne Manor like this, looking around, you know, 
then he sees the bat signal. Now that is not in the comic adaption. When Max pushes his uh, Selena from the wonder, his son Chip shows up, and that also wasn't in the film. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't in the film at all. And then when Selena falls to the ground, you know, she didn't say anything in the film. You know what I'm saying? The cast just came up and resurrected her. But in the comic adaption, she says, Miss Kitty, help me. You know what I'm saying? I think Miss Kitty was like the name of her cat, you know? Then Batman, when he's like fighting in Gotham City, and he had that bomb that he was carrying around. In the film, he actually put the bomb on one of the Penguin's henchmen, like one of the members of the Red Triangle Circus gang. But in the uh, comic adaption, he throws the bomb in the sewer, then it explodes, you know what I'm saying? Plus, in Bruce and Selena Kyle, they don't have a day that Wayne Manor like they did in the film. And then another thing was uh, Alpha was also at Max Shrek's costume party, which was not in the, the film. He wasn't in the, at the party in the film, you know, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I thought this was like well made, you know what I'm saying? They did like a good job on it, you know? And I had this ever since I remember getting this back when the film was out in 1992. So I had this like over 20 years, you know, and I kept it in good condition, you know. And I would highly recommend this. And if you read this, you wouldn't even have to uh, see the film. It's, it's, it's exactly like the film, panel for panel, you know what I'm saying? Screen for, sh I mean, shot for shot, dialogue. Like, some of it would be slightly different. But, I mean, it's exactly like it. And, uh, and as the you can see, I had both the, uh, film, the, uh, the comic adaption and uh, Batman Returns, where you like the film to itself, as you can see. Okay, this is J-Bat. All right. So yeah, this is my review for uh, Batman Returns, and this is Jay Bat. Okay, as you can see, this is Batman Returns, the official comic adaption. And this was the cover right here, as you can see, you know. Now, the, uh, the artwork, it was done by Dennis again. Like, well, he, he actually, Dennis actually wrote the story again, you know. But this time, you had, like, a group of, like, different artists. As you can see right here, you had uh, uh, Steve Irwin. And you had a uh, Jose Lewis, you know what I'm saying, Garcia Lopez. And you also had like the colorist, which was Tom McGraw. And the lettering was done by John Constanza. And he did the lettering for uh, the first Batman official comic adaption. And the editor, again, was uh, Jonathan Peterson. So, yeah, the, the cover was cool. And actually had somebody who did the cover this time that didn't actually do like the artwork. And his name is David Dorman. So yeah, this is the actual look of it, you know, how it looks, the cover, beautiful cover, you know. And this is the back of the cover, as you can see, it had like Catwoman on it, and a penguin or whatever, you know. And I had, and like various other scenes throughout the film, and it looks exactly like the film, you know. And I've had this for like over 20 years, I had got this when this originally was in the theater, when the Batman Returns film was out. That's when I got the comic adaption because I was reading comic books real heavily at the time. So I managed to get this when it was out, you know. So these are just some of the images of it, you know. And like I said, I had this for like over 20 years. And it's exactly the same as the film, you know. Like various like scenes, I'm saying. Like if anything, some of the dialogue is off. And some of like certain things that they did in it was kind of different too, you know. And I also believe that whoever drew Michael Keaton this time as Bruce Wayne, they didn't do as good as a job as the person that drew him in uh, their first official comic adaption for the original Batman film from 89. The Bruce Wayne in this one doesn't look exactly like Michael Keaton to that extent. He does though, but not as good as the original uh, 1989 comic adaption, you know. Okay. It has nice images, it's beautiful, well done, you know, and it looks exactly like the uh, the counterparts of the uh, the actors, you know, their characters that they play. It looks exactly like Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne, Batman, or uh, Danny DeVito as the, the Penguin Oswald cover part, and even uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Selena Kyle, Catwoman. They did a very good job on this, you know. Got various scenes from the film. Okay. So this is Batman Returns, the official comic adaption of the Warner Brothers motion picture. And this is J-Bat. In the end, Batman Returns is a great comic adaption of the film, you know. I thought it was very well drawn, you know, the artwork in it, the dialogue. You wouldn't even have to watch the film if you read this a comic adaption, you know. That's how well made it was, you know what I'm saying. Like, the artwork truly resembles the actors that played the characters, you know, like Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, and, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. They all truly resemble their actual, like,
film counterparts, you know, in the artwork. So this is Jay Bat, and this is my review for Batman Returns, the comic adaption.